What's up, navigation traders? Today is Friday, June 15th. Welcome to this week's video update. Let's jump into the alerts for the week. So I had it continued our uh, rolls and adjustments into this week as expiration winds down. And so let's start with the QQQ. So he had back-to-back -back vertical rolls where we were simply rolling from June to July and then adjusting the strikes appropriately to, to get us back into where the trade is fairly centered. So we had two of those right in a row. So if we take a look at QQQ, obviously it's been just ripping higher, strong, one directional, uh, going back to, what is that here, the 25th, or you could even say, you know, the 4th of April. So obviously that's gonna, you know, you're gonna have to continue to roll and you're going to be down on those trades uh, when it, when you have those one directional moves when you're when you're fighting against it when you know we have this we're using these as short delta they were previously part of an iron condor and we're continuing to roll them you know so that that is going to put a drag on our performance but you know that that's the way that we trade you know in periods of one directional moves to the upside we're typically going to see a drag on our profits but you've got to just keep putting trades on, booking winners, and it all and it kind of all works out over time. And you've got to keep that short delta on to protect yourself from a downside uh, downside move because we are selling that premium. So you can see here after the rolls. So we've got three sets of short call verticals now. Uh, so we just need some you know a little bit of downside to benefit that. Uh, still just, just barely outside of the range. This is all three of them combined together because they're so uh, so close together, just one strike apart. And so, you know, just, just looking for some downside. And, you know, the market doesn't go in one direction forever. So just, you know, I, I've got a lot of questions about this. Should we be holding this short delta? It seems like it's kind of hurting our performance. Yeah, when the, when the market's going up, yes, it, it, it hurts our performance. But over time, I and mean, we we've been doing this for a lot of years, and, uh, and and to us, this is the best, most profitable, most consistent way to trade. So hang in there, and 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 just let it play out, and and you'll see what happens. What you don't want to happen is you don't want to get too short, right? You don't want to get overly biased to the short side. And right now, we are two to one. Our short delta, our negative short delta, is twice as much as our theta. Okay, and that, that's right where we want to be. We want to be uh, anywhere from one to one to five to one with our short delta to theta ratio. So we are, we are in perfect position right now uh, in my mind as far as how I like to balance our portfolio. So keep that in mind. Just keep on doing the deal and it'll work out over time. Uh, same thing on XLK. We had a, a long put vertical instead of a short call vertical, but very similar trade. We rolled that from June to July. And so you can see price is uh, still barely within range here. Again, just looking for a little bit of downside to benefit that piece. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in ZN. So we had two different strangles on. This one was uh, adjusted at one point. Uh, you know, Typically on these uh, naked position short strangles, we like to roll or close them once we get in under that 21 days to expiration. We let this one go all the way to 10 days to expiration. And that's just because it was, it was very centered. I was hoping to get just a little bit more theta to decay before we, uh, before we got out of that. Ended up um, um, just closing that out. Took a small profit on that piece of the trade and we still have the, uh, the other strangle, which I'll go to now which in ZN uh, looks like this. So it's a, it's a full strangle. No adjustments to this one have been made yet. Uh, and you can see if we get a little bit of up move in bonds and uh, notes, uh, then we'll, uh, we'll be able to book a profit here. Uh, I haven't added to that even when price was down here, I was going to, I was looking to add potentially another centered strangle here. Uh, the problem is if you look at the implied volatility of TLT, you know, up here would have been fine. Uh, when applied volatility popped up, but uh, this week it's just been down, 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 and very low. So I didn't want to add any more premium into that one with uh, with implied volatility that low. I mean, even if we got <clears throat> the IV percentile up above 25, I'd be okay with adding to that one. 
Remember, we like to, to enter a new position. We like the one of the indicators, IV percentile or IV rank to be over 50. But if we're doing an adjustment and working our way uh, around a, a trade, you know, we'll still do it. We'll still add to it if implied volatility is under that 50 level. Uh, but we don't want to do it when it's seven, you know, you know, above, let's say 25. I don't have a specific rule of thumb. But if there's a diff, uh, just a little bit of juice in those options, then we'll look to uh, we'll look to add to it. But holding holding steady for now on that one. Next trade's opening adjusting trade in DIA. So we had a couple short call vertical spreads that were previously part of Iron Condors. And then we looked at, uh, we added an Iron Condor in DIA. So now we've got the three pieces on in DIA, which as you know, if you've been following for any length of time, you know that I don't typically like to get more than uh, three positions on in a symbol at any one time. So here's the iron condor that we just put on. See, it's still very centered, up a little bit of money, but not enough to book yet. Uh, so we'll continue to monitor that. And then we've got the short call verticals, kind of similar to QQQ, where we've just got some, looking for some downside to benefit, uh, to benefit those and holding those for, uh, for that short delta exposure in our overall portfolio. Next trade was a closing trade in EEM. So we closed out our short strangle in EEM, booked a profit over 40% of max in just 14 days. Uh, so if you take a look, let's take a look at the chart of EEM. Uh, applied volatility has, has had stayed relatively high. Got that contraction and, and steady price movement gave us, a, gave us the opportunity to to book that one. Now the IV percentile is right at 50. So if it, if it stays up there, we may look to re-enter uh, into a new position in EEM next week. So look for that. Uh, we are getting, we, you know, we do have a less number of positions on, less number of symbols uh, than we've had in the past couple months. And part of that is because now implied volatility has contracted. There's not as many symbols with high implied volatility. So uh, that, that's one of, the number, one of the reasons we like to expand our exposure in our account, have more positions on, more symbols when implied volatility is really high, and we like to have less when it's low. So that's why you'll see kind of a, a lower number of symbols here as implied volatility continues to contract if it does so. Next trade was an opening trade in corn. So we hadn't had a, a corn position on in some time. Implied volatility uh, really high in the grains right now, a lot of volatility. The, remember, the implied volatility indicator is not accurate on the grains, including corn. So really just looking at kind of where price was on this compared to past iron condors that we've put on. So this is just something that I do on a, have to do on a manual basis. But if we look at corn, you can see that, you know, there's just been a huge drop, which has created this uh, spike in option prices so we put this on and, you know, unfortunately, uh, the option prices expanded even further, implied, implied volatility in the options spiked even higher. So that's why you can see we're down when it's still well within our range. So even if it was centered, we'd still be down because the price of those options expanded after we put this trade on. So if it continues lower, we'll look to add another piece to this and just continue to manage it mechanically as we do. Next trade was a closing trade in Adobe. So we put our, this was our second pre-earnings long straddle that we traded in Adobe. So we, we booked a nice profit on the first one, uh, waited a couple days, implied volatility contracted again, and we re-entered, tried to go back to the well that squeaked some more profit, at, uh, profit out, held this all the way to the day of earnings, which is the 14th. Uh, so we had to close it and just booked a tiny profit. Didn't didn't hit our profit target by any means, but we're able to get out profitable nonetheless. Uh, and then let's, let's actually go to Adobe uh, ADBE. So after they after they announced earnings, you can see uh, you know price dipped a little bit, but you can see that uh, implied volatility crush. So what you know what happens is. After they announce earnings, the implied volatility just collapses, and that's why you don't want to hold those long straddles through the earnings announcement. We teach all this in the course, uh, and then and then other the other piece of that leading up to earnings. So, 
we uh, we were in the we were in the trade, uh, the first one, and boom, had this big move down. Implied volatility spiked, and so we booked a profit right there within just a couple days. Then the very next day, uh, price bounced back up, and implied volatility collapsed again. And I, and I looked at this as okay, maybe this is potentially another good entry point. Well, we had a decent move in price. We had a we had a uh, a big enough move in price to book a good profit. Unfortunately, going into the earnings announcement, uh, the, pri the, the uh, implied volatility just continued to contract, which is really not normal leading into earnings. A lot of times you'll get additional expansion in implied volatility leading into earnings, but we just didn't get that. And so that's why we had we just booked a small profit as opposed to a larger profit that we'd hoped for. So. Uh, two good trades there, though. Anytime you uh, get profits, those are good. Uh, next trade was a closing adjusting trade in 6E, which is the euro. So we had two strangles, closed out one of those, booked a profit, over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. Now we're still holding uh, this one here. You can see there's a big move in the euro uh, on Thursday. Um, so we are... Uh, barely breached our short strike. So going into next week, what I'm looking to do, I wanted to give it the weekend, see if we do get a little bit of a bounce back before we do the roll. But if we take a look at the number of days to expiration, we've only got 20. Okay, so we're under that 21 days to expiration now. So we're looking to roll or close that next week. Now implied volatility in the euro, let's take a look at that, is still fairly high. Um, yeah, still 58 on the uh, IV rank, 62 on the IV percentile. So what I look to do is, is, is definitely roll that position or, or close it depending on where price ends up opening on, on Monday. Uh, but we may add another strangle as well. So we got some decent juice in those options still. So we may look to add another uh, strangle centered around that one out in the... Uh, in the August cycle with 48 days to expiration. So look for that early next week. And lastly, opening adjusting trade in wheat. So uh, I thought we were gonna actually close out this trade and be completely out of it. However, uh, the opportunity presented itself. So we went ahead and added another piece to this one to keep the dream alive, to keep, the go keep it going. So we've got two different iron condors in wheat. Let's look at the first one. Uh, that we, the old one that we've had on for a while. Uh, you can see prices hanging out up down here uh, in the downside of its range. No adjustments yet. It came down and almost touched the break even. hasn't hasn't gotten there yet. So no adjustments made there yet. And so we just simply added another piece to this to add some additional credit and potential uh, profits. So you can see this is very centered. Not much uh, not much to do here yet. Just waiting for some more time to pass. And so we'll continue to manage these as, as we need to. So let's go over some of the other symbols. Uh, oil, big move down on Friday, down over three or about 3.75%. We've got this adjusted strangle on here. If we take a look at the implied volatility for oil, if we go to the charts, what you'll see is, uh, you know, we've got that spike back up on Friday with this big down move. And so, Oil is back in play for adding new positions. And so what we'll probably do is we'll continue to manage this one. Uh, the one in August still has 31 days to expiration. And then if we go to the continuous contract here to see the other. So September has 61 days. So by Monday, that'll have uh, you know 59 days to expiration. So we'll start adding a position in September. So with the spike in implied volatility and getting uh, to that point in the next expiration cycle that's in our wheelhouse, that 30 to 60 days, we'll start layering another position out in September. So look for that early next week as well. ES, so we've got a few positions on in ES. We've got a, uh, an iron condor where you can see just need a little bit of down movement to benefit that piece. And then as a totally separate trade, one that we've been just continuing to roll and keep on for that short delta exposure is a long put vertical. So just needing some downside movement to benefit that piece. 
Natty Gas, got an iron condor still in natural gas, just needs some downside movement, some more time to pass to benefit that. Uh, I mentioned corn, I mentioned notes, I mentioned wheat, apple. So we've got this uh, long put vertical that we originally put on for that short delta exposure. And we've rolled a couple times. You can see the price is still hanging out near the break even range. Just need some downside to benefit that. Went over DIA, EWW. So we've got two pieces on here, one of which is an adjusted strangle that's been adjusted into a 47 strike straddle. Uh, so we could just use a little bit of up movement to benefit that one. And then we've also got this additional short strangle on here that we're really close to uh, getting 50% of max profit out of. So look for that early next week, barring a major down move that takes us out of there. Uh, we should be able to book 50% uh, of max profit on that one early next week. EWZ, so we've got uh, kind of a similar thing. We've got two different positions on here. First of which is this adjusted strangle. Uh, remember EWZ had that massive move um, um, right here. It was down about 6%, rebounded, came all the way back up. Now it's starting to roll back over. Uh, but you can see, uh, so prices right here. If we take a look at just the calls, you know, you can see we're pretty much even on those. And then obviously on the puts is where we're in the money. So what we'll do is we'll just continue to monitor this. Uh, no need to do anything yet. If we take a look, we've still got 34 days to expiration. So nothing to do except for wait. You know, that theta is going to decay. That profit line is going to continue to move up. And what we'll do is, you know, assuming price is still kind of well within our range here, we'll just, we'll just roll down our calls and, and then roll that out to the next expiration cycle, but not until there's about 21 days left to expiration. So just hold tight on this one. Uh, obviously, if price continues to move lower, we'll roll down, down our calls and maybe stay in July, assuming it's, uh, there's enough time left. But we just got to see what happens when the time is right. For now, we're just holding. And then we added this additional strangle, which you can see here has got a decent amount of profit, uh, looking for a little bit more before we close that one out. IWM, so we've got an iron condor in IWM. And the strikes on that are, sometimes I start to forget what my strikes are, there we go. Uh, so need a little bit of downside movement to benefit that, some more time to pass. And then we've also got this short call vertical uh, that just, again, using uh, for that short short bias, looking for some downside to benefit that piece. Went over the Qs and I went over XLK. So that's all of our positions. That's all of our trades for the week. Everybody have a great weekend. Look forward to a new week of trading next week. Have a good one. Talk to you then.